Hey everybody, Ash here for the Triple S League with a quick introduction to GOG Galaxy 2.0. I'm going to give you all a minute here to go to the comments and yell at me for calling it GOG instead of GOG. Okay, we good? Good. GOG is easier to say, so that's what I'm going to call it, although I typically do refer to the original platform as GOG. GOG, of course, stands for Good Old Games. It's a storefront and distribution platform for digital games on PC. It's a division of CD Projekt. GOG is their digital storefront. And GOG Galaxy 2.0 is aiming to be a platform that ties together your entire gaming library in one place. Where you can see all the games that you have, you can see achievements for them, you can have friend lists, that kind of a thing. And this includes consoles. As you can see over on the right there, uh, somehow someone has managed to integrate Nintendo into this. And we've got Super Mario Maker 2 on the recently played by others area. I don't know how they did that. But if you look over on the right hand side, you can see that I've got my Epic Games, Origin, Steam, and Uplay libraries already connected. So I can see all of the games that I have on PC in one place. You can also connect Xbox and PlayStation. Now the process of connecting these libraries was pretty simple. The only official integration is the Xbox one. That's because Microsoft is partnering with GOG on this, but that's the only official one. The rest of the extensions are community made. Not all of the features are active for them. Perhaps they will be at some point in the future. I think my Steam and Uplay ones have been recently updated because I had to reconnect those when I started this video. Anyway, the process of actually integrating these is very simple. You just click the connect button and then you log into your account on that platform and it just integrates seamlessly. You don't even have to have the launcher for that platform open or anything. Now the unfortunate thing is that if you if you want to launch a game through GOG that is from a different platform, it will open the launcher for that platform. So that is kind of clunky. I don't know if there's a way around that. That would be really nice to just be able to directly launch the games. For example, just directly launch a Steam game without having it open Steam. But at this point, that's not the case. And of course, for consoles, it, it won't launch the game for you, but you will have access to other information about those libraries see your achievements, things like that, and hopefully be able to communicate with friends on your various friend lists. Anyway, a lot of those are features that look like they're coming down the road. Right now, the primary feature of Galaxy 2.0 is the game library itself and the various ways that you can organize it. And I think that they've done a really good job of, of creating an integrated uh, combined game library interface. So when I first launched the program, it loads up to this page called Recent, which shows me the recently played games. I could launch any one of these that I want. Not that I would have any reason to launch Rage 2 or Draugen, uh, but the Messenger is pretty fun. But I can launch right from here if I wanted to. Click on the Messenger, uh, you get all of this information, you get you get all of this information from Steam, you've, you've even got the videos and screenshots from uh, from Steam. It's taking them, takes them a second to load, but they are there. And of course I can launch the game by hitting this play button. While I'm here I'll also show you, I, I can click this My Progress tab and you can see all of the achievements that I have got. And if we scroll down to the bottom, here are the achievements that I do not have. Anyway, there's a variety of different ways you can look at your game's library. You can click on these bookmarks over on the side, see all of your Steam games. You can see all of my EA games, Epic, and Uplay. There's a filter called Installed, which uh, shows you all the games you have installed, and it's sorted by platform. But if we go to the All Games tab, now this is all of the PC games that I own, and there's a variety of different ways you can filter them. You can filter by genre if you want. So let's say I want to see all the platformers I have, I just click that. It filters it down to all of the games that are labeled as platformers. I can sort by, you know, platform if I want. I can also sort by installed status, so I only want to see the platformers that I have installed. I click right there, and there they are. I have no idea why Half-Life is in there, but these are all of my uh, these are all of my installed platformer games. And now another thing I can do if I if I like this view, if this is one that I'm I'm going to use a lot, I can just click this bookmark button, and it creates a new bookmark on the side here. Uh, genre platform status installed, and so this will just jump me to this view anytime I want. Now I can rename this, call it. Jumpy Jump for all my Jumpy Jump games, and then anytime you know I load this up and I, I'm like, you know, I want to do some classic old school platforming, just right here, and I can click whichever one I want and launch it. 
So some excellent options for sorting and filtering games that you want to see. There are also some options for, I'm just going to go, whoops, hang on. Um, go look at just my Steam games here for a second. Some view options, there's a grid view and a list view if you want to get more information. This one's kind of boring, but you know, if you want yours in a list, kind of like you'd get on Steam, you can just, uh, you can have it like that. I'm going to put it back to grid view, change the size of the grid, and then you can sort it by name alphabetically. Uh, you can sort by activities, so this sorts it by, you know, which games I've played most recently. And then, of course, you can sort by installed versus uninstalled. Of course, I've got a filter down to installed, so it's only showing installed games. Um, but I'm going to go back to activity here. Then you can you can put in um, custom tags. So tags are things you can add to each game. So I'll go add tags here. So I'm going to add a tag to this called favorites. Now I've got a tag called favorites, and so I can add, let's add Sekiro to that. So that should, might have to, oh yeah, there it goes. Uh, I'll add Celeste, the favorites. So, you know, your favorite games or, or whatever kind of category you want, you can create your own categories, sort by tags, and then they'll be right there for you. One click takes away all of the filters but of course there's also a search bar, so you know, I want to play Sekiro. Boom, there it is. Now if I'm looking through my uninstalled games and there's one I want to play, they do actually give you an install option. Presumably if I click here, this is going to launch Steam and install Ape Out. I haven't actually tried this, so I'm just going to assume it works. So there you go, there's my brief introduction to GOG Galaxy 2.0. It's looking pretty good, I really like the organizational features, I like that you can create custom tags, I like that you can sort things in a variety of different ways that you can install and launch games right from this interface. Again, it's kind of annoying that if, if you're launching a, a Steam game or an Epic game, it's going to launch that platform to actually launch or install the game. Hopefully they'll find a way around that, I don't know if it's even possible. Now, it doesn't have the features that Steam has at this point, but I love the interface way better than Steam's, personally. Now, will this end up being a practical alternative for managing your non-GOG games? I can't fully answer that question at this point. I love what they've done. Like, I love the layout and the interface way better than Steam. But still, 97% of the games I own are on Steam, so am I really going to use GOG to launch all my Steam games? when it is going to basically launch Steam in order to do that anyway? I don't know. I can't answer that question yet. It's going to take a couple of weeks or months of actually using it to decide, you know, is this really what I'm going to default to? But overall, I really like what I'm seeing so far. I'm really looking forward to seeing what other features they add to this. And if it eventually incorporates all the Steam features that I need with a better interface, then it probably will be my, my platform of choice. Plus, I'm going to start buying more games through GOG because I like supporting CD Projekt. So there's that as well. All right, let me know what you think. Let me know what features you've seen here that you like. Let me know what features you'd like to see if you're planning on checking this out when, when it launches and is no longer in beta. Let me know in the comments below. I'm intending to use this as my primary launcher for the next little while to just get a better feel of how it works and also keep an eye on it as it evolves. And if a bunch of new features get added, I will more than likely create another video showcasing all of that. So you can check back here, subscribe to the Triple S League YouTube channel to make sure you catch those updates. By the way, if you're new to the channel, we do a ton of Cyberpunk 2077 content. So if you're here because you're a fan of GOG or you're a fan of uh, CD Projekt, CD Projekt Red, Definitely check out the content we've done for Cyberpunk 2077 and the weekly podcast we do, the Cyberpunk 2077 Community Podcast. You can find the playlist for that on our main page. It's a collaboration we do with three other Cyberpunk channels, and we've had lots of awesome guests, including other content creators and YouTubers and staff from CD Projekt and Artalsorian Games. So check that out. We also do a more general gaming news podcast twice a week right here on this channel. So hit that sub button, stick around, and hopefully you like what you find here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that like button, and I will talk to you later. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, sub, and hit that notification bell, and then check out some of these other videos. Find the link to our Discord server and other important stuff in the description below.